Hey guys and welcome. Today's video is a bit different from the usual content I'm doing, but it's nonetheless important. Cause today I want to talk about a few things that I would love to change in Battlefield 2042 if I could, and that I think should be different or at least adjusted. I will start with some general improvements I'd like to see and then get a bit more into specialist changes that I just recognized while playing and mastering them. What I will leave out are map changes and improvements cause we know that these are being worked on so there's not much feedback to give at this point. But let's start with the general things and the first one is the spawn system. This definitely needs to be reworked cause there are three things that are really annoying. The first one are repeated spawns at the same location even though there are enemies around and every time you spawn you will instantly die. So this should be adjusted to more diverse spawn locations and a better system that recognizes enemies close by. For example in this situation I tried to spawn on the last remaining objective and spawned three times in a row at the same spot right in front of an enemy enemy tank. And I was apparently not the only one. I can remember that these issues were also present in Battlefield 1 operations right after release of the game, but that they were fixed very successful. So I hope that this is possible in 2042 as well. The next point here are these spawns where you try to deploy at an objective, but instead you spawn more than 100 meters away. Especially in Breakthrough this makes it incredibly hard to defend sometimes, cause by the time you reach the objective the sector is lost. I know this might also be some kind of penalty for dying, but sometimes it just feels a bit too much and also causes players to wait until the sector is lost instead of respawning and trying to defend it. So it's a bit about the balance here and in my opinion the balance is not quite right sometimes. And the last point for the spawn system, and this might be the most annoying one, are the forced spawns at the beginning of each round. I know there's always this video scene with the soldiers walking down the road at the start of a round and that it shows the actual players and their specialists, but there has to be a better solution for this. It always stresses me to watch the countdown knowing that I have only a few seconds left to decide which specialist I want to play and what loadout I want to use, and if I'm looking into a weapons plus menu I might not even recognize the countdown and then get kicked out of it even though I was just about to customize my weapon. And then I either spawn with a specialist and loadout I didn't want it and have to redeploy or I have to play it until the next respawn. Both is pretty annoying and I would love to see a good solution for this and the removal of these forced spawns in general. The next point is probably only important for console players, but even I as a PC player would like to see it in game, and that's console only crossplay. Cause right now I don't think anyone is really happy with the crossplay options. From my experience, the crossplay servers are much worse than the PC only or console only servers, and that makes the whole gameplay experience for everyone not the best, to say the least. After the release of Battlefield 2042, I was playing with crossplay turned off, and I know that a lot of other players did the same and the server performance was so much better. But earlier this year it was almost impossible to find matches with crossplay turned off, so we all had to get into these crossplay lobbies. And the server performance is not the only point here, cause playing against PC players as a console player is not easy, no matter how good your aim assist is, if it even works correctly. And I know that a lot of players on console don't like to play against PC at all and I can totally understand this. Right now the only chance for console only lobbies is to play the game in the old gen version where only PS4 and Xbox One players are on a server, but this is not a good alternative if you have a more powerful PS5 or Xbox series and you want to take advantage of it. So console only crossplay should definitely be added to the game. Point number three, and that's surely something a lot of people will agree with, is that All Out War should have more modes besides Conquest and Breakthrough. Don't get me wrong, Conquest and Breakthrough are fine, but what about typical modes like Rush or Team Deathmatch? Why are they not available as permanent modes in All Out War and instead are only there for a few days over in Portal where some players might not even recognize them? Especially Rush is a mode that truly belongs to Battlefield for me and I miss having it as a permanent mode. What I would also love to see are more modes like Domination or Squad Conquest that we had in former titles already, cause these were pretty nice for some shorter matches and a more squad based experience. Right now I gotta be honest that Conquest and Breakthrough are getting a bit boring and Portal doesn't always have something interesting available, so having a bit more choice in All Out War would be great. 
And in addition to this, having a server browser would make things even better. Cause especially at times when the player count is a bit lower, it would be great to have a browser to just check what game mode is played right now and what map I would like to join. For example, if I want to play Conquest and click on the normal Conquest, there might be only AI field lobbies available, while everyone is over at Exodus Conquest, but I don't know this cause I can't see how many lobbies are available for each of the modes. And in addition, it's almost impossible to play a certain map cause you never know what you will get. So basically the same browser we have over in Portal, only for All Out War. And then there's some general quality of life improvements I would like to see that we sometimes even had in former titles already, but for some reason they didn't make it to 2042. One of them, for example, is to see the remaining health of a vehicle in the spawn screen. We had this in Battlefield 1 and we also had it in Battlefield 5, only after a few updates, but it was added eventually and made spawning into vehicles so much safer. Cause right now you never know if you spawn right into death or not, cause the tank or the heli you choose as a spawn point might be at low health already and you don't know it. So this would be a nice little addition and would avoid a lot of unnecessary deaths. Another thing I'd like to be able to do is to completely remove attachments from the plus menu. Cause right now you might only need one third of the attachments you're carrying around with you, but you have a lot more in the plus menu. So completely kicking out all of the attachments you never use would make it so much easier to only switch to the attachments you really want, cause you only carry them with you. And I think especially on console it would make the whole plus menu a lot easier to handle. And as a last point for the general improvement section, it would be cool to unlock weapon skins with every weapon tier. Right now you only have the tier 5 skin, which is this blue and black one you probably have for each and every weapon by now, but then there's nothing for a long time until you reached tier 1. If there would be a skin unlocked at every tier, it would make the whole mastery system much more rewarding. But that's just from the point of view of a player who always needs a task or something to work towards, so this might not be important for other players. And at the end, a few thoughts from my side to the current state of the specialist and which ones I think should be improved and how. First of all, I think that most of the specialists are at a pretty good state by now and are very well balanced, but there are also some that still need a few adjustments. For me, McKay, Boris, Irish, Pike, Rao, Casper and Falk are pretty good so far. McKay has his grappling hook and is faster on the zipline and when straving and that was pretty much perfect right from the start. Boris and his sentry turret have already been nerfed and are still useful now but not overpowered anymore. Irish is still a bit underrated but already much more played than before season 1. Pike and Rao had their great overhaul with one of the last updates where both of their traits were changed and I think they fit perfectly now in their roles as recons. Casper had his C5 drone nerfed but he's still a good specialist with his traits and abilities. And Falk was also just perfect right from the start and there's nothing I would change here in any way. So that's 7 out of 11 specialists that are pretty good now but then there's still 4 of them that need some changes. And the first one for me is Sundance, but here I'm only talking about the anti-armor grenades and their damage, cause after the reduction of the grenade belt to only one grenade at a time, the anti-armor grenades are almost useless. They deal so little damage to vehicles that it's sometimes not even worth to switch over to them. Before the update, when Sundance had two grenades, the damage every one of them dealt was okay, but now it should definitely be more to balance it out. And what I would also love to see is a faster access to the grenade belt menu, because right now, when you bring up the grenade belt and then hold the button for the plus menu, you will get access to a quick menu for the grenades. But this is not very useful if I have to press two buttons anyhow. So why not give access to this menu simply by holding the button for the grenade belt? That would make it so much easier to switch between these two versions of the grenades. And that would also be the same for Irish, who also carries two gadgets and sometimes it's a bit annoying to switch over from one to the other. Another specialist that needs some adjustments, at least to its mastery, is Dozer. Cause right now you need to do kills with Dozer's shield in order to complete the mastery, but I think this takes him away from his actual task. What Dozer is supposed to do on the battlefield, at least in my opinion, is blocking bullets with his shield, being the first in line or at an objective to protect his allies. But the mastery gives him a completely different task, so instead of sticking to the squad or teammates, Dozer is running around trying to dash enemies with the shield. A mastery that is more focused on deflecting bullets would fit this specialist much better, cause I think in general he's a very good and useful character, but the mastery might keep people from playing him. 
And that's the same with the new specialist Liz and her rocket launcher, but here it's not only the mastery, but the launcher in general and also her ability. And I think that everyone who played Liz for a while agrees with me that the rockets are far too weak. You can't even kill a ranger with one hit, what you can do with a recall SM5 for example. So I really think her launcher should deal more damage to all kinds of vehicles. Or keep the damage and give her a third rocket instead of the two she has now. That might work pretty good as well. In addition, I think her mastery should not only count vehicles destroyed with the launcher but also assists. Cause it's really annoying if you shoot down a tank to low health and then someone else destroys it and it doesn't count towards your mastery at all. That feels a bit unfair to be honest. Her passive ability to see damaged vehicles through walls is pretty okay so far, but it would be an even greater advantage if she would be able to see the health of this vehicle right through walls as well, and not only when pointing the crosshair at it, just like everyone else. That would give the player a better feeling if it's worth to shoot a rocket at the vehicle at this point or not, but in general I think Liz definitely needs to be reworked, cause right now she's the weakest specialist in the game. And the last one who is not at a perfect balance right now is our friend Angel, but he's probably not even sad about it cause he knows that this is just how it works out sometimes. Yeah, I know this was a bad one. Anyways, when Angel lost his ability to give armor with one of the last updates, he also stopped giving 20 extra health points to the allies he revives. Cause before the update he gave 50 health plus 20 armor with every revive. So the revived player got up with 70 health. But now he only gives 50 health and the 20 armor are missing. So I think these 20 health points should be added when reviving, so he would simply revive with 70 health instead of 50. Cause right now Angel is basically doing a faster squad revive. I know that he also fully resupplies the downed player, but when you are under fire the full ammo doesn't help you as much as 20 extra health. And that's it for today. A bit more extensive video this time, but that's just all the stuff I had on my list so far, so I packed it all into this video. But now I would love to hear your opinion as well, so feel free to tell me in the comments below if you agree with the suggestions I made or not and what changes and improvements you would love to see in Battlefield 2042. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumb up and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.